In this video, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks that might help you get your friends and family into wargaming. I've had people asking me about this a good deal uh, recently, sometimes in comments, but very frequently it's been during uh, live streams that I've been doing, like the Every Other Sunday show, which strangely I do every other Sunday right here on YouTube, but also on Twitch, which I do twice a week, Mondays and Fridays, Monday nights, Friday mornings, twitch.tv slash tabletop minions. There's chat, there's conversation going on on both of those platforms, and this question comes up, how do I get my family, um, potentially a friend, um, my spouse, my significant other, into this hobby. And there are certainly some ways to do it, and that's what I'm going to go over here in the rest of the video. But the most important thing probably to figure out right off the bat is that not this isn't a hobby for everybody. And I'm not trying to gatekeep. I'm saying not everybody is interested in this kind of weird junk that we do. I'm saying that it should be up to you to understand that maybe, I mean, you can ask, you should certainly ask, but it's a situation where you should ask once. Do you think you'd be interested in trying this out? Um, you know, friend who doesn't game, uh, spouse, uh, parent, uh, child, something like that. Gauge their reaction. You know, don't, I think it's a good idea to try to look them in the face because you can get all kinds of interesting responses and things like that. And if they're like, eh, well, then don't push it. If they're like, no, no, I don't think I'm interested in that. Then again, don't push it. Don't go, well, what about later? Like, you know, just get an answer. And if you get an answer that's like, eh, I'd, I'd give it a try, then follow the rest of these steps. One important thing to determine right off the bat is, do they already game? Are they already gamers of some sort? And when I say game, I don't mean necessarily, obviously, tabletop wargaming, because that's what we're trying to get them into. But do they play board games? Do they play role-playing games? Do they play video games? Um, my wife likes board games and she also likes strategy type video games like Civilization and stuff like that. So she's a pretty good candidate and that's kind of why we're kind of slowly moving towards her starting to start doing some gaming. But if you've got a parent or a child or whatever that doesn't do any gaming at all, it's unlikely they're going to be interested in doing this kind of gaming. Now, the thing is, is that in this day and age 2021, Nearly everybody games in some fashion. It might be, you know, uh, whatever. Be, 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 do people still play be, Bejeweled? I don't even know if that's a thing anymore. Candy Crush, all that kind of stuff. Those are games. They're not kind of in the same realm, obviously, as board games, role-playing games, collectible card games, uh, miniature games, the stuff that we like. Uh, but but everybody does game in some fashion. So even if they're just into simple puzzle games or fun things like that that they kind of work on their phone, they may be interested in this. But if they're like, nope, I play no games and I have no interest in any games of any kind, you probably don't even bother to ask. So if you've got somebody who's interested and they're like, yeah, I'm interested in trying out this thing that you do, you know, here in your hobby room or down in your basement or up in the attic or whatever it is with all the little tiny painted people and the buildings and the trees and the dice and all that stuff. Um, then great. But understand that in most situations, you know, we know that tabletop wargaming is two parts. It's the gaming part and it's what I like to call the hobby part. Some people will call it the craft part, but the building and the painting and all that jazz. Most folks, it's easier to get them into the gaming than it is to get them into the hobby. Now, this is not completely always the case. I have friends who, you know, play a lot of miniatures games and also like to paint and do all that stuff. And they have a spouse who just likes to paint because they're very crafty and they dig that stuff, but they're not interested in the gaming. But for most people, the concept of let's sit down and for a couple hours, I'll teach you how to play this game with the stuff that I've already built and painted and taken care of. That is an easier pill to swallow than, hey, let's sit down and let's take hours and hours and hours and hours to build and paint models and then play something. It's better probably if you've got some stuff ready to go. Small skirmish games work great for this because it's very easy to have two forces ready to go so you and your family member, friend, whatever, can uh, sit down and play and you can teach them how to do it. Now, that being said, you may have a spouse or, or a family member or a friend who is just super crafty and then maybe that's the way you want to get them into it. And then maybe once they start building and painting, they'll then want to start putting those uh, little pieces onto the tabletop. Another very important thing is to go slowly. My personal motto is to start small and grow slowly. The whole 
go big or go home thing is not necessarily part of my vocabulary. I believe that you should start small and grow slowly. I'm going to get it tattooed on my arm one of these days. But um, it, it, it doubly so in this situation. When you've got a person who is unfamiliar with this type of gaming, isn't 100% sure if they're even that particularly interested, you don't want to immediately like go, okay, cool. So we're going to play this huge army game and it's going to have all this stuff and you've got these forces and this is going on and that's going... Like, you need to start out with something smaller and easier. Um, very frequently, gateway games work real well for that kind of thing. I've talked about gateway games a whole bunch of times in the past. Pachow. And, and if you haven't watched any of those or whatever, the, the, what, basically what a gateway game is, is it's usually a game that kind of straddles between two areas. So there are games out there that are kind of between a board game and a miniatures game, let's say, a war game. So um, Zombicide is a great uh, gateway game. I would say that... Warhammer Underworlds, you know, all the Shade Spires and the Beast Raves and all that stuff. That's all um, also pretty uh, uh, gateway uh, adjacent. Um, I would say that Star Wars X-Wing, if you've got a Star Wars fan and you have all these little pre-painted, little, it's not that hard to teach a person how to play that game. So in that situation as well, again, a gateway game, something like that. But it's also very important to find... I think generally a bit of a simpler game to start if you're going to be going down that road. If you're really interested in, you know, getting this friend or family into it, um, a game that I've been teaching at conventions to people who are neither my friends nor family, I don't even know these folks, uh, is Song of Blades and Heroes, and I've talked about it a bunch. It's a very simple skirmish fantasy game. I bring all the parts. They can sit down and play it. It's very super quick and early or easy to learn, but it's also got a very elegant kind of game system. I talked about it in a video that's so old it's probably embarrassing, but ciao. Um, so look for something like that. Don't immediately throw them into, you know, some huge historical game with hundreds or maybe even thousands of uh, models on the board. Don't go into a huge army game. Don't go into anything competitive. Start small. Grow slowly. Stay away from jargon as much as you can. There are so many things that we as gamers, people who've been doing this for a while, there are so many things that we will say just as a matter of course, as if we assume that everybody, you know, knows what we're talking about. Now, when you're in your element and you're at the game store with other gamers and you say D6, people know what you're talking about because, you know, it's a piece of jargon that people understand. But a person who's not necessarily into gaming or maybe not into that kind of gaming is going to say, I don't know what a D6 is. And you go, oh, well, it's the six-sided die. Every time that you drop a piece of jargon in your conversation with this person who you are trying to teach how to play this game, Every one of those things is just another little reinforcement that lets them know that maybe this isn't for them or that they don't know what they're doing or that kind of stuff. So it's generally best to explain things and to kind of try, try really hard. And I know it's difficult for a lot of folks. I've kind of trained myself over the years in many situations to try to, you know, and I think it's partially because of this channel, I have a tendency to take a look at things and say things because I think I'm talking to somebody who's new to this hobby. So because of that, I can look at these pieces of jargon and kind of skip over them in my mind and then actually say the real thing, line of sight instead of, instead of LOS or whatever, that kind of stuff. So it's important to think about that. Each one of those little things that they don't understand just builds up to eventually to the point where they go, I'm not interested in playing because I don't get it. So try to get rid of the jargon in your conversation as you're teaching this person how to play. I shouldn't have to say this, I don't think, but if this is the first game you've played with this person, don't crush them. Don't, don't, don't step on their head. Don't, you know, I mean, like just, I'm not saying completely baby them, but maybe baby them a good amount. You know, if they have questions, you should certainly answer. This is not a competition. There is no glory in you squishing a person who's never played before. If you are the teacher, but have decided to squash the student, it's, it's not going to work out well for you if you want more students. It's just the way it works. So try to, try to foster fun as opposed to competition. If this person is competitive by nature, even then you want to ha get them at least to the point where they become a fair fight. You want to at least train them and get them to play enough games to the point where they can finally say, okay, you can take the gloves off now. And then I guess then it's bare knuckle boxing. I guess that's what happens. When you take the gloves off, I'm assuming, but it, I guess maybe it's a hockey thing. Anyway, my point is don't squish the people that you are teaching. Do not go in there and go, oh, well, you shouldn't have done that. And then, you know, destroy their forces because they won't come back most likely. So definitely kind of, I don't want to say coddle them, but you should probably coddle them a little bit, go and just kind of play so that they can get the idea. The more fun they have, the more likely they're going to want to do it again. 
And like I said, if they're into competition, then you still need to build them up before it's actually worth it to knock them down. I wouldn't go deep into the lore of whatever game it is that you are playing right from the get. Um, unless, and here's the thing, don't go deep into the lore and explaining all of the things. Well, the reason this guy's got this sword is because 17,000 years ago, his uh, great-grandfather, just kind of a time dilation thing here, it's, I'll explain it later in the second book, but you, don't do that, okay, for the most part. Now, you may have a family member, friend, or spouse, or whatever, who is super, super into story. If you know them well enough, then you know that about them. So maybe before you even get them into playing, you start feeding them some books if the game that you're playing has books. If you're into Games Workshop stuff, there are an abundance of books out there from, um, oh gosh, Our Friends Black Library is the name of the company. And you can get them on Audible maybe if they're into audiobooks. You can do all kinds of different stuff. So in this situation, then definitely... So if they if if they want to to really get into the story and they're super into story, then maybe lead with story and then eventually move them into and then they can be like, remember those guys in that book? That's these guys here, and that's helpful. But for most folks, again, I'm not saying that I you know you know, lore is lore and it's good and everything or whatever. If you're interested in that, but people who are just getting their feet wet very frequently aren't that interested. Some are, and if you know that person, that's a great person to try to get into the game, and you want to do it by giving them a book or two. But for most people, they just want to roll dice and have the little people shoot at each other. After the first game is done, it's very important to discuss how things went. Answer questions. If they maybe didn't ask during the game, maybe now they just thought of it and go, well, why couldn't I have done this? And answer that question, if, you know, that kind of stuff. If you're not getting any questions at all, if it's all done, the game's done, and they're like, oh, yeah, great, thanks. That could be an indicator to you. That could be an indicator that they're just not interested in it and they're probably not going to come back for a second game. But if they're like, well, but now, so what if I would have done this? Or what if this would have happened? Then in that situation, you very possibly may have started to set that hook and you may be able to get this person into the, the overall hobby or at least the gaming portion of it. And that's very interesting, you know? So kind of understand your person that you're playing with, a family, friend, whatever. You probably know them relatively well, I'm assuming, and you can kind of tell if they're interested or not. But the after-game discussion, don't just be like, okay, the game's done, let's go get something to eat, or I'm going to see you later, or whatever. Like, have some time. Schedule yourself a bit of time to discuss the game, talk about different aspects, things that they could have done differently, things that you might have tried differently had you been playing in a different way, that kind of stuff. And if they're interested in it, then keep working that, keep answering that. If they're just not like interested and don't have any questions right off the bat, well, you know, then obviously you're not going to try to force it. And that may have showed you right there that this person's not necessarily at this time particularly interested. And lastly, understand that your main game, your main passion in this particular hobby, like if you are a one game person, you are just interested in Age of Sigmar or you are just interested in Malifaux, you don't play any other games, that may not necessarily be the same for this person you're trying to get into the hobby. They may not care about um, OCR Bone Reapers or the Neverborn or, you know, any of that kind of stuff. If they're not interested in history and you're a huge, you know, Flames of War player, they may not necessarily find that that interesting. If you're interested in getting this person into wargaming in some fashion, you may actually have to sit down and figure out a game for the both of you to play. It may not be the game that you play when you go to the shop or the club. It may not be the game you play when you go to tournaments and stuff like that. But if you go to tournaments and play with your friends, but with this friend or a family member or whatever, you play, again, Song of Blades and Heroes, like I mentioned before, or some other skirmish game, you know, whatever it might be, or anything, then that's just your game. And that's the game that the two of you play, and that's something you can share. And it may foster, you may then, you know, spread out into other games, but then again, they may not. If you've got one game that you focus on, then why? You know what I mean? Like, why would, if you're not really willing to spread out, then I don't know that this person necessarily should be expected to spread out necessarily either as far as their appreciation of different titles and things like that. So it's important. I'm a big fan of playing lots of different games and I've been doing it for years. But if you're only just like, this is your jam and this is the only thing, it may not be your opponents, the person you're trying to get into the uh, wargaming, it may not be of their interest. So I hope this helped. I hope this helps you maybe get some friends and family into the hobby if that's what you're looking for. Some, let's say couples, uh, like having things separate. They like, you know, I've got this hobby that I do and you've got this hobby that you do. 
But a lot of couples also like to have not necessarily everything together, not every single hobby the same, but they do like to have some crossover. So maybe this is a way to go. And again, maybe this becomes, it starts as something where, yeah, you play the game from time to time, maybe a couple times a month, you get together down in the, in the basement or in the hobby room or whatever, and you sit down and you play a skirmish game. And then eventually maybe this person is like, well, how hard is it to paint these little models? I think that'd be kind of fun. And then you can kind of move along that way as well. Or maybe, like I said earlier, maybe you start with the hobby, the actual craft, because you know that that's the thing that they would enjoy most. And then eventually, maybe uh, you start rolling some dice and, and pushing, pushing some uh, little people around. It's important to not push. That's probably the most important thing. And know your audience. Know the person you're trying to teach or trying to get into this hobby. They just may not be interested because they're not a gamer or they're not into anything that's not a video game or maybe... You know, this this game's got no story, really, no lore, and they're huge into that. Understand the person that you know and love and figure out what game might work for them and ask and don't push. And if they're not interested, well, you know, then I guess you got to find new friends. It's hard to find new family.